بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam When we travel from one country to another Our currency that we use here in this country normally will not carry you out or through, especially if you want to do cash dealings. You have to exchange that currency that you have. The same thing with this dunya and the hereafter. When you leave this world, the dollar, the cent, the gold, and the silver will be of no use. And the dealings will be in good deeds. The hard currency there, as soon as you leave this world, is your hasanat and your sayyat, your actions, good and bad. Evidence, hadith al-muflis, a famous hadith, fi sahih muslim, hadith Abi Huraira, radhi Allahu an, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, one day he asked the companions, atadruna man al-muflis, do you know who is the bankrupt? Who is the chapter 13 or 11? You name it. The companions said, Al-Muflisu man la dirham lahu wa la mata'a. The bankrupt for us is the person who does not have cash nor assets. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muflisu min ummati. The bankrupt of my ummah is a person who will come in the day of resurrection with good deeds. But at the same time, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named some of these good deeds like the salah, like the zakah, like the siyam, like the sadaqah. But at the same time, he will come also with a baggage of bad, of bad deeds. At the same time, he backbit this person. He harassed this person. He gossiped about this person. He said, فَيُؤْخَذُ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ Now, he's going to have to pay that person back that he, 
he back bit from his good deeds. If you backbite somebody, you're going to have to pay that person back in the day of resurrection from your good deeds. And if you run out of good deeds, you're going to start receiving his bad deeds. His bad deeds will be accredited to your account. Again, we're mentioning the whole hadith to prove that the dealings there will be hasanat and sayyat. Another hadith for Sahih Bukhari, the book of Riqaq. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Abi Hurayra, Man kana lahu inda akhihi mazlamatun falyatahallalhu minha min qabli an yakuna thamma dinarin wala dirham. If you have done something wrong to your brother, ask him to forgive you or give him back what you've taken away because in the day of resurrection is not going to be dinar which is sent dirham or dollars. It's going to be hasanat. So, when we ask you as a Muslim to call yourself to account, We wanting you to look at your hasanat and your sayyat. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqu Allah. Wal tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat li ghad. Wattaqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amanun. O ye who believe, have taqwa in Allah. And let every person, listen carefully to that verse, the meaning of that verse in Surah Al-Hashr. This is the evidence that makes calling your nafs to account in this dunya mandatory, a wajib, because it's a command. And let every person look at what he has or she has sent forth for tomorrow. Meaning, look your hasanat, and your sayyat. Tomorrow here, Akhi is the hereafter. I'm just going to spend with you 15-20 minutes to let you know how important it is that you start checking your actions, your deeds, your hasanat and sayyat and assess them Will they help you tomorrow or not? Because this is serious business. I'm just going to go with you over the first night in the graveyard. Just the first night, not even the first night. A part of the night. And you're going to find out the value, the preciousness of your hasanat and sayyat. Anas ibn Malik, ibn Malik radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثِ Three things follow the deceased to his or her graveyard. يَرْجِعُ اثْنَان Two will return and one will stay. Again, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثِ A deceased person will be followed by three things. Two will return home and one will stay. The deceased person will be followed by his family members, one, his wealth, two, and his hasanat and his sayyat which is his actions, his deeds. Those two will return. And the first one will start taking care of the second one. It's not yours anymore. He will take your money. He hardly will wait three days. You're going to be asked for it. How did you earn it? How did you spend it? And he will benefit from it. The third one will stay with you, which is your actions, your deeds. 
When they finally bury you, and they give you the 15-20 minutes, the last thing that you're gonna know about them is hearing their footsteps leaving, abandoning you. By Allah, it's a scene that if you just ponder upon it, just live it. You see, we all believe it. But just imagine yourself there, throwing sand in you. It's actually a sunnah that you're supposed to throw three handful in the deceased. Cover you with sand, and then they leave you alone. Subhanallah, every time here once there is a storm, and the electricity runs out, and it's dark. There is no power. There is no air condition anymore. No, all of this is gone. That's your wealth, it's gone. You don't have it. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith al-mar'a sawda alati kanat taqum al-masjid, once he prayed janaza on her, he prayed janaza on a woman who used to clean the masjid. At the end he said, inna hadhihi al-qubur mamlu'atun dhulmah. على أصحابها. These graveyards are filled with darknesses. وصلاتي عليهم تنيرها لهم. And my salah will will make it lit for them. Dark, powerless, أخي. Powerless. Your soul will return to your body. حديث البراء بن عاز. حديث أبي هريرة. There is no other faith, أخي, in the, there is no other guidance in the face of this earth that given information about the journey back to Allah after this world than Islam. You will not find this anywhere else but in Islam. Step by step, by the book. And not fairy tales. قال رسول الله قال الله بسنده With its chain of narration. You can look at it and see who narrated this. Strong, weak. As soon as they leave you, the soul will come and join the body again. Here is the thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send two angels. In some of the wording of the hadith, munkarun wa nakir. They have names. Hadith Abi Hurairah, fi surah al-Tirmidhi, and the hadith al-Sahih. Munkarun wa nakir. These angels, akhi, they were fashioned to terrify you. Even if you're a believer. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described them in one of the wording. Blue eyes. Huge. They stare at you in a way that makes you terrified. They intimidate you. They come and place you through a fitna. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described it to be close to the fitna of the Dajjal. And once, by the way, he told the companion about this fitna. The companions cried, wept. He told them, أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّكُمْ تُفْتَنُونَ فِي قُبُورِكُمْ قَرِيبًا مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الدَّجَّالِ حديث أسماء رضي الله عنها من تأبي بكر It was revealed to me في سنن النساء It was revealed to me that you will go through fitna exactly like the fitna of الدجال What is the fitna of الدجال if, 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 if you know about it? الدجال is somebody will come going to have جنة النار جنة to his right نار to his left and he's gonna kill somebody, bring him back to life. Do you believe I'm God? He come enter my Jannah, his Jannah is gonna be hell, and his hill is gonna be Jannah. The same exact thing. Those two angels are gonna place that person through a very difficult test, whether he is a believer, whether he is not a believer. And they will ask him those three questions. Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? وَمَا دِينُكْ What is your religion? And what do you say about the man who was sent to you? A 
average Muslim will answer this A+. Plus. But you know who will be able to answer this? Those who translated the answers to these three questions to Hasanat. As for those who translated the answers to these three questions to Sayyat, bad deeds, Hasanat are good deeds, bad, bad deeds, will say, ah, ah, I don't know. يُثَبِّتُ الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant steadfastness to those who believed and implemented in hadith al-Bara ibn Azib as soon as the believer answers the three questions you know what the angels are going to ask him? وَمَا عَمَلُكْ How did you come to that? How, how did you do it? You see, uh, they're going to ask him one time. He may answer. They're going to repeat the questions to him again. It's a fitna. And they're not going to tell him, Who's your Lord? Who's your Lord? Speak. Who's your Lord? Speak. Come on. Who's your Lord? And if he answers the first time, they will repeat the questions again to him a second time. And that's where the tathbeet happens, because a believer will repeat the same answers. But someone who did not translate these answers to good deeds, he will say, maybe I given the wrong answers, and he will change. But they will ask him at the end, once he answers, how did you come to that? How did you pass? He said, he will say, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst all, all of us amongst those. They will say, قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَآمَنْتُ بِهِ وَصَدَّقْتَ وَعَمِلْتِ I read the revelation. I believed in it in my heart. And I implemented it. That is why hasanat are there. Immediately, Akhi, that hole in the ground, a caller will call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Sadaqa abdi, my servant, answer the truth. Afrishu lahu min al jannah, albisuhu min al jannah. افتحوا له بابا إلى الجنة ليأتيه من طيبها وروحها shroud him from Jannah furnish his graveyard from Jannah open for him a gate to Jannah wording of the hadith that his graveyard is going to be extended as far as his eyesight could reach That is the believer. And this is the value of the hasanat. This is the preciousness of the hasanat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you in the verse to call yourself to account for, to see. Are you bringing forth, are you sending forth some hasanat for the graveyard? As for the kafir, as for the fasiq, as for the fajr, as for the munafiq, you name it, kafir, fasiq, munafiq, fajr. He will say, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. They will actually try to help him. They will tell him, Muhammad, you don't remember Muhammad? He says, I don't know, I heard the people saying this and that. لا دريت ولا تلوت you may not get any help. You may not remember. They will make dua against him. A caller will call. Kathab. He lied. No abdi. Kathab. Albisuhu min, albisuhu min al-nar. Shroud him from the hellfire. Wal-ayadu billah. If 
يَفْرِشُوا قَبْرَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Furnish his graveyard from the hellfire. اِفْتَحُوا لَهُ بَابًا Open for him a gate to the hellfire. To receive from it. النار يعرضون عليها غدوا وعشيا ويوم تقوم الساعة أدخلوا آل فرعون أشد العذاب Brothers and sisters in Islam Your hasanat and sayyat are not going to stop there You see رجعوا وتركوك وفي التراب وضعوك ولو ظلوا معك ما نفعوك ولم يبقى لك إلا عملك ورحمة الحي الذي لا يموت Look at this They brought you and they left you alone In the sand they placed you They abandoned you You're alone there Alone In the darkness No one is around you Your hasanat or your sayyat, akhi, will appear to you in a form of a person in that lonely environment. If you have sent forth hasanat, it will come to you in a form of a man wearing beautiful clothes, smelling nice, handsome face he will come and tell you Abshir billadi yasurruk I came to give you the glad tiding of every good thing that you were waiting for Abshir bi jannatin min Allahi wa ridwa have the glad tiding of jannas gardens from Allah and the pleasure and the acceptance of Allah hadha yawmuka alladhi kunta tu'ad this is your day that you were promised. The deceased person will not recognize the person. He will not know who is this. He will ask him, and you also, I want to give you the glad tiding. Your face is a good face. A face that brings good news. Who are you? I don't know who you are. Who are you? He's going to say, أنا عملك الصالح I am your righteous deeds. I am your hasanat. Wallah, he swears to him, By Allah, ما علمتك إلا سريعا في طاعة الله بطيئا في معصية الله. By Allah, I only know you so quick once it comes to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the call to prayer is here, you don't delay. When you're asked to give sadaqah for the sake of Allah, you don't delay. And once it comes to the disobedience, you're always slow. You know what he's going to tell him? Jazakallahu khayra. He's going to tell him. May Allah reward you good. That person will, will be showing then his place in paradise to the extent that he will be so hasty asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, aqim as He will be so longing, so eager for the day of resurrection to be here, for him to go and meet his family and get his wealth back again. The angels are going to tell him, Uskun. Sleep, relax, chill. فَيَنَامُ نَوْمَ الْعَرُوسَيْنِ He will sleep the sleep of a groom. And he will be waked up in the day of resurrection by the most beloved person to him. As for the kafir, as for the fasiq, as for the munafiq, as for the fajr, a very ugly looking person will appear to him in the graveyard, wearing ugly clothes, smelling so bad. And he will tell him, evil tiding. 
أبشر بالذي يسوءك. I wanna give you the tidings of evil. I wanna give you the tidings of hell fire. Will you will be burned? You will be punished. You will be placed in. The man will look at him and say, "Who are you?" I wanna give you also the evil tiding. Your face brings evil tiding too. Who are you? I am your wicked deeds. I am your malicious deeds. I am your sayyat. I am your bad deeds. By Allah, I only know in you so slow. Once it comes to the obedience of Allah, so reluctant. Come to the salah, let me think about it. Pray five times, let me think about it. Free yourself from riba, let me think about it. Wear the hijab, mm, let me see. So slow. Give sadaqah for the sake of Allah, mm, let me see. Later. But once it comes to the disobedience, let's go to the club. Yes, sure. Half hour, be there. See you. Can you come pick me up right now? Swift, quickly, in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَجَزَاكَ اللَّهُ شَرَّ May Allah reward you evil. Reward and evil. That's what, how he said it. Reward you evil. That person, brothers and sisters in Islam, will also be shown his place in the hellfire. For him, that graveyard with these conditions that we just mentioned is better for him than the hereafter. After he has shown his place in the hellfire. He will say, Ya Rabb, la taqimis sa'a. Oh Allah, do not make the hour come. And that's where we understand this hadith. By the way, Man ahabba liqa'a Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'a, wa man kariha liqa'a Allah, kariha, kariha Allahu liqa'a. Hadith Ubad ibn al-Samad, fil Bukhari. Whoever loves the meaning of Allah. You see, a believer, once he's shown what to come, the pleasures, he will become detached from the dunya. The kafir? No, he sees the hellfire ahead of him. يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ On that day, every single soul will see what it sent forth. And every single soul will see of good. And every single soul will wish that the distance between the evil that it sent forth is far away. Is distance, big distance or wide distance. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is where you have to call yourself to account now. Now, muhasaba. You see, right now if you call yourself to, to account and see what kind of deeds are you sending for tomorrow, because now, calling yourself to account has no consequences. <laughs> but then, in the hereafter, there will be a lot of consequences. It will be muhasaba, account and punishment or reward. Now, account, oh Allah forgive me, you're free. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an translated this in a beautiful statement that he made. Imam al-Bukhari compiled it for him in the book of Riqa. He said this, ارتحلت الدنيا مدبرة Look at this, the world has gone, gone backward. The dunya has gone backward. That means you're facing this way, the dunya, every step that you make, every second that you live, the dunya is gone behind you. ارتحلت الدنيا مدبرة وارتحلت الآخرة مقبلة and the hereafter is facing you every single second every single day every single week the dunya backward the hereafter forward 
ولكل واحدة منهما أبناء and each one of them has children the dunya or the akhirah this life has children and the hereafter has children فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا So be of the children, فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ Be of the children of the hereafter, وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا And do not be of the children of this dunya. Listen to this, listen to this. فَإِنَّهُ الْيَوْمَ Today, عَمَلٌ وَلَا حِسَابٌ وَغَدًا حِسَابٌ وَلَا عَمَلٌ Today, actions, no account. You go commit adultery, you go drink alcohol, whatever you want to do, leave it. Leave it. ما فيش حساب. لا حساب. No account. No accountability. No accountability. But tomorrow, it will be accountability and no amal. ذلك يقول يقول يا ليتني يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأن له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي. A person will, will remember then. And what remembrance will do for you? He will say, I wish I have done something for my life to come. A, a, a person will wish to come back to this dunya, أخي. You will wish to come back. قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا no brothers and sisters in Islam calling yourself to account to find out are the actions that you're doing right now will help you through the first night in the graveyard or not? Just the first night in the graveyard. Will they provide you the steadfastness to answer these three questions? Will the actions that you're doing right now will be transformed to be a good looking person? Smelling good, giving you the glad tidings? It's your call. Yes or no? If it is yes, say Alhamdulillah, keep riding until you die. If it is no, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا You still living? You still have a chance. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repent and start preparing for the hereafter. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqu Allah, wal tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat lighad, wa attaqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. O ye who believe, have taqwa in Allah, and let every person look to what he or she has sent forth for tomorrow and fear Allah indeed Allah is all aware of what you do aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم O oh mankind, why are you so careless about Allah? Why? Why you're not giving Allah His deserving consciousness? Ma 
Aren't you afraid of the graveyard? Aren't you afraid of the day of resurrection? Why are you careless? Do you think he does not see you while you're disobeying him? Huwa al-basir. He sees everything. Do you think that he does not hear you? Once you speak the haram, Subhana man wasi'a sam'uhu al-aswat. He hears everything. Do you think he does not know what you're thinking about in your chest? وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ فَاحْذَرُوهُ He knows. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى He knows the secret and what beneath the secret. You know what it is? His forbearance allowed you to act in this manner. He just letting you do what you want to do. But don't deceive about his forbearance, his hilm. It doesn't mean that he's allowing you to do the haram. He could take you by all the sudden in this dunya. In Allah yumli lilzalim hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflitah. Allah will prolong to the transgressor. And once he takes him, he takes him by all the sudden. And if he does not take him here in the dunya, the graveyard is a place. Brothers and sisters in Islam, think about the hereafter, Akhi. Call your nafs to account and make a change in your lives. Make a change in your lives. In another note, we normally here hardly in this community ask you for funds or only once we meet a certain project. If all of you are coming here regularly, you've been seeing this car that carries the deceased to the graveyard, and you've been seeing signs about sites. Alhamdulillah, PGMA community will be the first Muslim community actually that will have a ghusl facility, a washing facility for the deceased as we talk about death. We're going to actually have a room. Now, alhamdulillah, we're able to transport the Muslim deceased from the hospital to a funeral home instead of disbelievers doing it, who do not understand our rituals. Because funerals for us are acts of worship. It should be done in a certain way. It is very hard to get non-Muslims to understand your sunnah. So the best way is to do it yourselves. And it's the best way for a Muslim body, a deceased Muslim body to be handled by Muslims. And you cannot imagine the savings because these services are offered for free. The car, inshallah, the washing facility for free. Before, I recall having to pay $3,600 for a minimum costly janazah. Right now with the car, with the washing, the savings will be up to $1,600. And more. You're going to end up paying for the piece of ground which PGMA owns some of it. I'm going to ask you today to hang around for five minutes after the salah. We already have the room. Alhamdulillah, it took us a long time to get it approved by the county because some of the neighbors had concerns. And if you recall, we mentioned this before. So Alhamdulillah, now the county approved it. It's up to us now to put that washing facility together and get the refrigerators and the tools inside. The estimate is there, but don't take it 60 to 50,000. That's what I heard. That, but this is primary or they're still receiving some proposals there. But we want to start this project for the sake of Allah. I'm going to ask my brothers in Islam to stay behind just for five minutes and give some hasanat for the graveyard, inshallah. Give some hasanat for the hereafter, inshallah. And don't worry about the economy. Don't worry about 
Allah will replace it for you. The spending that you will do now is going to be for the sake of Allah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took an oath on this. ثَلَاثٌ أُقْسِمُ عَلَيْهِنْ Three things I'm willing to take an oath on. مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ Your money will not decrease, your wealth will not decrease because of a sadaqah that you give. So please, hang around just for five minutes. We will raise some funds so we can start the project insha'Allah. And maybe another Friday we'll raise another sum of money. So this way we have that facility. It's the first ever facility within a masjid where the deceased now can come, be washed, staying in a masjid, shrouded, and taken to the funeral home. You cannot beat that. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to kick shaitan away so that we can raise some funds inshallah after the Jum'ah to start this project. Allahumma aghfir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala alqawm alkafirin Allahumma ahsin khitamana Allahumma inna nas'aluka qabla almawti tawbah Allahumma inna nas'aluka qawla la ilaha illa Allah qabla almawti ya rabbal alameen Allahumma tawaffana muslimin wa alhiqna bil salihin Allahumma ja'al quburana rawdatan min riyad al jannah wa la taj'alha حفرة من حفر النيران اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم أكرم نزلهم ووسع مدخلهم اللهم اغسلهم من خطاياهم بالماء والثلج والبرد أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما